Let's pray. Lord, we thank you and we praise you for all that you do in our lives, things seen and unseen, things deserved. And sometimes because of your mercy, we don't get what we deserve. So, God, we just thank you for bringing us through another week and into a new day, another opportunity to get things right, to operate in your will. And, Lord, as your daughter, I pray that the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart are acceptable in your sight, for you are my strength and my redeemer. Amen, amen, and amen. This has been a crazy season for me when it comes to technology. I feel like it's a conspiracy to drive me nuts. For the last few months, either my phone, my computer, my laptop, my printer, the Wi-Fi or the internet at home has been blinking in and out. And you know that little thing that spins around and then just when you think you can do something, it, does, it stops and you start to type and then it starts spinning again like, ha ha, I got you. <laughs> you know, a couple of weeks ago, I couldn't, you know, the, that I couldn't even print. It's like the printer decided to join in the conspiracy to drive me crazy. I finally got the computer to the point where I could bring up the sermon. I hit print and it just kept collecting it. It's like, well, you're not leaving me out of this conspiracy to drive pastor crazy. So for the last couple of months, I have been refusing what I needed to do in order for things to work. Sometimes it's easier to hold on to the familiar, even though it's crazy and driving you crazy, even though it's cluttering up your life. We get comfortable with the clutter. We get comfortable with the old things and we don't want to let them go. Say for instance, my phone. My phone sometimes wouldn't answer calls. And then when it did answer the call, I'm talking and the person is giving me the information, then it just drops them. And I couldn't understand why this was happening to me. I, I'm screaming, hello, 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 like the commercial, the old commercial. And, and, and I could see the numbers showing that somebody is still on the other line. And they said they could hear me, but I couldn't hear them. And then it's my desktop computer. Forever taking time to load. I get frustrated and you hit the keys repeatedly and if you're looking and then you have like 50 A's running across the page or with the printer, I'm hitting the print button on the computer and then I get 50 pages of the same thing. My computer is just driving me crazy with its blinks and is cutting on and it's cutting off and doing what it wants to do, but not what I want it to do. And you get to the point where you're looking for the best window to throw it out of so to have the most impact on the ground. You know you're getting frustrated by technology. Then there's my laptop. I love it. Nice, compact. I can bring it back and forth. But over time, I've been putting things on it. And somewhere along the line, a couple of, about a month and a half ago, I put a document on it that took me under the 200 megabytes that the laptop needs to bring stuff up. So it's telling me that I need to clear up space, but you won't let me in to clear up the space that I need to clear up space. So I'm frustrated. And then, as I said, my printer decided to join all of that. If you're wondering what this has to do with today's scripture, I'm glad you asked. Sometimes we get so caught up in the things that we do every day, the things that we know, right, the things that we collect for a good purpose, that those good things, those things that we collect can get in the way of our every day and, and make us miss an opportunity to do something. Say, for instance, my phone. I, I didn't want to lose my text and, and the other stuff that's on there, the pictures that's on there. So instead of going and getting another phone, I didn't want to surrender the stuff that was behind me that I had collected. And, and the computer, I had all these documents from years and years ago that I just may need again some week. And I, I didn't want to surrender that stuff to, to bring in the new program that would make me run more efficiently. And then the printer is not going to work because the other stuff isn't working. And, and that's how we run our lives sometimes. We're so full of things. And most of the time when we talk about purging and letting go and surrendering to God, our first thought is about the bad things. 
And yeah, it's easy to think about getting rid of the bad things, but what about the good things that we want to hold on to? When God is asking us to surrender, sometimes we have to clean, purge, move some of the good things that we want to hold on to in order to get to where God wants us to be. Paul had been talking about for weeks, we looked at Paul and his message to the Gentiles that we don't hold on to the things that will hinder us. And this is what was happening in today's scripture. Mary and Martha and some of their friends heard about Jesus coming to town. And so Martha invited him to their home. And I'm sure that Mary and Martha got all of the, what was taught to them about being a good host or hostess. And they invite Jesus over because of what they heard about Jesus. And like Martha, we have ourselves full of good stuff, so much good stuff that sometimes we don't have room for Jesus. We're doing the committees and the meetings and the programs and all these things are important, but what's important is spending time with Jesus. See, see, Martha had all her best hostess skills. I'm sure she probably pulled out her best china and her best linen, just like today. Amen. <laughs> and she prepared the best meal that she could. She was so busy being the best hostess because Jesus is teaching us that we are to be friends and, and invite people and, and, and treat people like we want to be treated. So why wouldn't we do our best with Jesus when Jesus comes into our home? But Martha missed something. She was so busy doing for Jesus that she didn't have time to be with Jesus. Sometimes we're so busy doing for Jesus in the church, we don't spend time with Jesus. It's wonderful to be on the committees. It's wonderful to come to the meetings. It's wonderful to do all the programs. But we're not taking the time to sit at Jesus' feet and pray and read scriptures and journal to him about our love for him. We're missing the point just like Martha. Martha was so prepared to be the best hostess. And, and one of my favorite lines said, Lord, doesn't it bother you that my sister has left me to do all of the work by myself? And you know, sometimes that happens in church when we don't see someone working as hard as we're working in the church. And we're thinking, Lord, doesn't it bother you that they're not working as hard for the church as I am? Well, this morning, my brothers and sisters, we're being asked to do the better part. Sometimes it's okay to miss that meeting, to spend time in prayer for a family member. And sometimes it's okay to miss that community, that committee project to go and visit somebody in Jesus Name And sometimes it's okay to not do all the things we do in the church if it means we have to sit down with Jesus to find what Jesus wants us to do in ourselves. But we get so comfortable with the clutter in our lives that we don't make the room that we need to for Jesus. We're so busy spreading out the table of worship and work that we forget that sometimes we just need to sit at Jesus' feet and feed from him. I, I can, you know, imagine oh, in my mind what it must have been like to have Jesus in the same room. Now, I, I think that Martha and Mary invited Jesus to their house because of the things that they heard about him from other people. But wouldn't it be better to hear it from Jesus himself? But Martha wanted to be the good host because that's what she was taught. We want to be the good church member because that's what we were taught. And that's good. But sometimes we have to let some of that go in order to sit with Jesus. Mary, I'm sure she got the same training that Martha did. They're sisters. But she chose the better part. She decided, you know, I, I could listen to what everybody else is saying about Jesus, but I have an opportunity to sit at Jesus' feet and hear Jesus speak directly to me. I know there's other people in the room, but I'm just going to believe that Jesus is speaking directly to me. Ha have you ever heard a message or a song that's being played or said to millions of people that you may never see, but that song speaks directly to you? That message speaks directly to you? 
So I can understand Mary foregoing all of the stuff of being a good hostess and taking that chance of being talked about in the neighborhood. You know, I went to her house and she didn't even serve me. Took the chance to be talked about so she can sit at the master's feet and learn directly from him. Those devices that I wanted to hold on to so much because it had memories and stuff from my past was keeping me from having conversations today. And it was keeping me from getting the information that I needed to move forward. That's what we do in our lives sometimes, my brothers and sisters. We want to hold on to so much stuff, not bad stuff, good stuff. That sometimes even the good stuff gets in the way of what God is trying to do in our lives. We have to choose the better part. We have to wrestle with hosting or listening or, or we have to wrestle with what it means to really sit and hear God speak to us. We don't want to hear about Jesus. We want to hear from Jesus. There are times that we are busy and we need to just sit and concentrate on our relationship with Christ. Martha may have been a great hostess. I'm sure that Jesus' presence in the neighborhood inspired her to invite him in the first place. But she was missing the better part of him being there, hearing from him all the things that she was hearing from everybody else. So what are we hosting in our body that we don't have room for Jesus in the form of prayer, in the form of of reading scripture in the form of fasting, in the form of doing the things that make us closer to Christ. I have the pleasure of sitting with the prayer fellowship on Tuesdays, on the second and fourth Tuesdays of the month. And we were talking about going to this early time for the summer. And they were joking about what it means, how they had to adjust their schedule because they get up and they have their ritual in the morning. And it warmed my heart to hear these women talking about, I have to do this, this, and then I have my devotion time. They know that they're preparing to do something for Jesus by coming to church to be a part of the prayer fellowship. But the first thing they do in the morning is spend their time with Jesus. My brothers and sisters, that's our message for today, that we have to continually, every day, choose the better part. We can't get so caught up in doing all the good things for Christ that we don't spend good time with Christ. Maybe it's time to evaluate, to purge, to reset, like I had to do all of my devices. And you know what? I'm enjoying downloading the things and seeing all of the new stuff that's part of the program that I missed because I was just hitting, you know, you hit the button to tell you, do you want to upgrade? I hit it, I upgraded, but I don't read what's in the upgrade. And all those upgrades was jamming up my electronics and jamming up my life because I wasn't getting much done. And it was frustrating me. But when I purged and I got rid of everything and I trusted the cloud, <laughs> sometimes we have to purge in our lives, brother, sister, and trust what's in the clouds. That it will be there for us when we need it. Choose the better part. Be with Christ. Pray, study, read, fast. Instead of doing for Christ, meeting activities and committees. Purge and trust that was in the cloud was in the clouds will be there for you when you need it. Amen.